night guys captain dylan hubbard here at hubbard's marina with another live stream fishing show that's right it's sunday night and it's time for that live stream show thanks for tuning in y'all again it is captain dylan hubbard here at hubbard's marina hubbard's marina has been fishing local waters for nearly a hundred years in four family generations and tonight we've got our live stream show going on and every sunday night that live stream show happens 8 30 p.m for about an hour and you get a chance to win free fishing trips that's right it's sunday night june 28th at 8 29 p.m if you are watching live sunday night june 28th at 8 30 p.m now uh just wait a few minutes we're gonna get started here shortly if you're not watching live if it's not sunday night june 28th you can skip forward to where you see the video start but Either way, if you're watching live, you're not watching live, it doesn't matter. Make sure you give that video a like. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you give that video a like. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Also, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe to our hey, channel. If you're watching live, we really, not really watching appreciate live, it. It doesn't matter. Always a help when people subscribe to that channel for us. And then also, if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like our page. Like the page and don't forget to comment at least one time. Comment where you're watching from. That helps us to keep track of all our great Hubbard's Marina friends and family. And it also enters you to win that free fishing trip. So make sure to comment at least one time to be entered to win on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. So we are just about ready to get started here on our live stream show. Appreciate y'all hanging out, tuning in, and joining us on this beautiful Sunday night. Keep in mind, y'all, real important don't forget if you're watching on facebook don't forget to share this video with your friends on your timeline on your favorite fishing group don't forget to share this video start a watch party share it with friends and family text your buddies it is time for that sunday night live stream show we got a lot of cool stuff to cover tonight had crazy cool photos all lined up edited nicely all cropped and looking gorgeous and for some reason they didn't transfer so you are going to see behind the scenes footage unedited uncropped untouched up photos <laughs> unfortunately i always like to try to make it look at least a little presentable I spent probably three hours on that today and Time was wasted <laughs> because for some reason it didn't transfer. But no worries, guys. I'm still going to show you the photos. They're just not going to look as good as I want them to. But uh, make sure you have your venting tools. I've got my venting tool here. And uh, I'm ready for a good show. Hopefully you guys are as well. Uh, don't forget again to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now, uh, on average, about 70% of the people that watch our YouTube live stream show are not subscribers. Come on, if you're watching on YouTube, right below the video, there's a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate the support. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure to like our page and if you got a subscribe if you got a youtube account make sure you subscribe on youtube too we'd appreciate it right now we're sitting at about 310 live viewers and it is just about that time so let's get this party going thanks for tuning in tonight guys hopefully You've got your venting tools ready to rock and roll, and you're ready for a good show. I know I am. Got lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight, and 
Got a great show lined up for you next week. Really excited about our special guests that we have lined up. So we've had a lot of people ask us from time to time about slow pitch jig fishing. So slow pitch jig fishing is kind of this new thing that we got going on in the Gulf of Mexico. And we've got the originator the most widely known the the og uh, slow pitch jig fisherman uh benny ortiz uh gonna join us next week sunday night july 5th for this live stream show right here on the hubbard's marina facebook and youtube channel so Hopefully you can join us next week too. If you're at all interested in slow pitch jig fishing, make sure you tune in next week. Uh, Benny Ortiz is going to join me. We're going to be talking all about slow pitch jig fishing offshore in the Gulf of Mexico and even the Atlantic, South Atlantic, the East Coast of Florida, definitely going to apply to you as well. So make sure to tune in next week. But tonight's going to be pretty cool too. Don't worry. We got lots of cool stuff to go over. First things first, let's start out with some of these 39-hour catches. We're going to start with the 39-hour trip that came in Tuesday. Show you what that 39-hour brought in this past Tuesday morning on that 39-hour trip. Let's see if we can get yeah, With a nice up. huge pile of fish. Good morning guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with a nice huge pile of fish. Captain Brian and the boys just got back in from a 39 hour and Captain Brian and the crew put a hurting on them. Will, it looks like you got a huge pile of fish here, man. Yeah, we got them. Looks like some big scamps, some big gags, lots of red snapper, mangroves, some yellowtail. Look at all those gags. That red grouper over there looks huge, man. Oh, yeah, he's a big one. Some kingfish tails I see. Looks like a killer trip, huh? Oh, yeah, great trip. We hit the mangoes hard at night. Uh, people had, uh, Walter had 20 mangoes at night. And, Dang. Uh, yeah, so we hit the mangoes hard at night. And then mix some big red snappers in there. And we hit some relatively small red snappers in the morning and uh, strung up several of them. And then they just got bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the day. And by the end of the day, we had our limit and we're going back to some of the biggest snappers in the trip. Wow, some big, big fish, man. Looks like a killer catch for this 39-hour fishing trip. And you got more of them to come, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, There's got it. Fish out there. Left plenty of them biting. Still got another trip tomorrow, Friday, Sunday. Got tons of 39-hour and 12-hour extreme trips left this red snapper season. Looks like a heck of a catch. Thanks, Will. Yes, sir. Wow. Mountain of fish. <laughs> so that was the 39 hour trip that got back Tuesday. Let's look at the 39 hour trip catch that got back this morning. Let's pull that up real quick and take a peek at that because they did really well this morning too. So Marina, another Good morning, guys. Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. Another huge pile of fish from this 39 hour trip at Hubbard's Marina. Captain Brian and the boys just came in and check out these big ones. Some monster gags and red snapper. Woo! -hoo. Big old fish, man. Looks like a killer trip. Mountain. Mountain of fish. Looks like you guys did really, really well out there, Will, huh? Yeah, it's just getting better right now. It seems like we, uh, we killed the red snapper on one spot. We had probably a hundred of them and most of those gaffers on one spot. Wow. Did good on the mangroves at night. We got there and had some current, but the current stopped and uh, the fishing was great after that. That's all. Look at the size of that vermilion. Holy moly. He was on the red snapper spot. That is huge. Crazy. Big some nice scamp. big scamps. Some gags, some the, red groupers. Our biggest red snapper of the season. Ed's got probably a 30 pound grouper in there. I saw Ed's grouper, man. That was huge. Some There's some big gags in the pile, I heard, huh? Yeah, yeah, we did. Very, very well. Very cool, man. That is one heck of a catch. Thanks, Will. Yes, sir. Mountain. So that was the two 39-hour trip catches from this week here at Hubbard's Marina. We're going to rip through some of these photos. Again, normally we have these all cropped and nice, but unfortunately, uh, due to some technical difficulties, 
uh, they didn't transfer. So we're going to look at unedited, untouched up, uncropped photos. Not really my style, but hey, it is what it is. And right now we're sitting at about 420 live viewers. I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight, joining us. Again, hopefully you got your venting tools ready for a good show. And uh, <laughs> let's get into these photos. So they're all mixed up, inshore, nearshore, offshore, all kind of mixed together. Right now the mangrove snapper are thick around inshore, around the seawalls, docks, bridges, jetties, mangrove snapper are thick inshore. And this is our good buddy Damon showing off a nice mangrove snapper. Damon is th about three years old, a little more than three years old. His other older brother Lucas and him go fishing quite a bit and uh, Damon is picking it up fast, man. Going to be a, quite a few photos of Damon tonight, so we got more of those to come. He is a cool kid. Here is Captain Garrett's 39, or uh, excuse me, Captain Garrett's 12 hour uh, private fishing charter catch from the other day. Limit a red snapper, a bunch of big red groupers, some nice gag grouper, and scamp too, about a half dozen scamp mixed in there as well. And look at those vermilion at the bottom. I mean, monster vermilion snapper. So, really good fishing lately on the Flying Hub 2 and the 39 hour trips offshore in deep water. We've got some really hot water right now, which is making things a little interesting uh, near shore, uh, but offshore the catch has been really, really steady. Some monster fish. And again, if these were all cropped out and looking good, they would be much more impressive, but you guys are seeing uncropped, unedited photos. Beautiful fish. Again, from the Flying Hub 2 here on our 12-hour trips. This was from our 12-hour extreme the other day. Captain Rich, Captain, Man or, uh, Captain, Rich, Captain Joe, and uh, Captain Garrett have all been doing really well on the Flying Hub 2. And the snook fishing is so good, even I'm catching those snook. <laughs> uh, we had the uh, Fox 13 report Friday morning. Uh, I unfortunately didn't get it done Thursday because I was super busy. So I came in super early Friday morning, got that report done, and had some extra time. Went out and casted a D or uh, casted a mirror lure, uh, uh, Miro Dean XL with a green back, silver body, and literally insta bite. Nice big snook. Seeing a lot of these scamp grouper, some nice gag grouper, big mangroves. These are from our Flying Hub 2 trips. Here's a nice big inshore mangrove snapper, Captain Chris Wiggins on the right, and one happy young angler showing off that big mangrove snapper. Some nice gag groupers offshore. The, that offshore fishing has been stellar lately. So really, really happy. And I don't know if you caught on, but this is one angler. Didn't smile in any of the photos. He's got another big photo coming up of a big mangrove snapper, but has a trophy red snapper, trophy gag grouper. Not a smile. <laughs> that is a serious angler right there. I love it. Some big mangro or a big red snapper. So, oh, there's another one of him. Stoic. <laughs> I like his style. Beautiful weather lately, really flat, calm conditions, just hot, hot out there, hot weather, uh, but really nice fish. Definitely a lot of good fat red snapper, some nice gags, and this, this right here is not a red snapper. This is a silk snapper, also known as a yellow eye snapper. You can tell this right here is different from what we normally see. This is not a hybrid or this is a red snapper. It's got kind of that pinkish reddish eye and it's also got a very pink, dark pink tail. And this is a silk or a yellow eye snapper. It's got that obvious yellow eye to it. And then I'm hitting the wrong button. So obvious yellow, yellow eye and then it's got a yellowish tail with that black leading edge that black trailing edge, trailing edge is what I meant to say, of that back fin. So that is a silk or a yellow eye snapper. Very, very kind of rare for our area. Very deep water snapper. Pretty cool to catch 
on the Flying Hub 2. Some nice red grouper, red snapper. This is James Vereen and his father went fishing on Father's Day and caught a pair of nice red snapper. Another father and son duo showing off a big red snapper. Some nice gags, some nice mangroves. Again, unedited, uncropped photos, so you're getting a little bit of everything. Here's a photo from Robert McCoy, local Treasure Island photographer who caught our dolphin watching crews cruising down the beach at sunset. We do offer a free beer and wine sunset. Can't beat a free beer and wine trip. Here is Damon again, our little buddy, and his older brother, Lucas. Damon is the unofficial mascot of Hubbard's Marina, <laughs> if you didn't know. Let's see, there we go. There is Lucas, Damon's older brother, showing off a nice big old snook. He broke his arm. He broke his right arm, right wrist to be exact. Still out fishing in a cast, not going to slow him down. Damon showing off a snook, and this is their good friend Zach out fishing with them. Damon is the man. I think I showed that photo last week, but still a great photo. Long story short, some really good snook action inshore. Lots of mangrove snapper. So let's now look. We're going to look at the 39-hour fishing trips. 39 hour catches here's some 39 hour fish this is from our tuesday 39 hour trip big mangrove snapper some big gags some nice scamp grouper some big vermilions nice red snapper gags just crazy good catches lately at hubbard's marina some happy young anglers out there on the 39 hour trip there's our good buddy Todd Taylor showing off a nice red snapper. Larry Miller. Some good ones. Mike Upham from Orlando. Beautiful fish on that Tuesday 39 hour. This is Captain Rick Gross down in uh, the south shore of Tampa Bay. He's out of Bradenton, Anna Maria area. He does inshore Tampa Bay fishing. His kids bought him this 39 hour fishing trip on a gift certificate for I think Father's Day is I think what, what they bought it for. So inshore fishing guide, professional charter captain comes out offshore fishing and he quote called it a bucket list trip. Uh, so pretty cool to see uh, Captain Rick Gross having such a good time out there. Called it a bucket list fishing trip on that 39 hour. Look at that mangrove. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Some nice catches on that 39 hour trip. Now let's see that 39 hour trip that came in this morning. The Let's see. Now we're going to have to sort these. You guys are seeing down and dirty behind the scenes right here because unedited uncropped photos so here's a bunch of john martin pics <laughs> they send me a lot of these stupid photos <laughs> good old crew having a good time it's a nice big old gag grouper big red snapper look at the size of that red snapper from that 39 hour trip we're going to talk more about those red snapper. They're loving the dead baits right now. There's the pile of fish that we looked at a video of. There's the uh, jackpot winning red snapper and a jackpot gag grouper. The gag grouper was just shy of 28 pounds. Monster gag grouper. Lots of John Martin picks. Sort through here. <laughs> There's that big jackpot winning gag fresh out of the water jackpot winning gag and a big big cooler nice catch there's a nice one from craig this was just shy of the jackpot just shy of about 26 pounds so not too far off of the jackpot winning fish some big old gags nice red snappers another nice red Big mangroves. Look at the size of that mangrove snapper. Just doesn't do it justice without cropping these photos a little bit. <laughs> but hey, again, it is what it is. You're seeing uncropped, unedited pictures straight from the boat's camera. Some nice catches on this 39-hour trip. 
There's old Jig Head Ed. Infamous Jig Head Ed. Look at that. Nice catch. This was a beautiful red snapper. I don't know why this photo is all distorted. I can't unzoom it for some reason, but that was a fat red snapper. Nice catch. Definitely, Will, like Will mentioned on this 39 hour trip that came in this morning, they hit one spot that had probably a hundred gaffer size red snappers. So red snappers so big, they had to be gaffed about a hundred of them on one, one spot, hundred head of gaffer size red snapper. Look at that one. Almost as big as she is monster pig of a red snapper. Nice box of fish coming together. Look at that one. So big. It's almost as big as Tammy. Big old Toros. Big mangroves. Nice Porgy. Big Gaffer Gag. Nice big mangroves. Red Snappers. Nice. Look at that calm weather and that Saharan dust. Nice Scamp Grouper. One of the best eating fish. I think we're back into the videos now. So that is it for photos. Killer, killer trips lately. Killer fishing. Really, really good catch of fish. So that's about it for photos. Let's make sure I don't miss anything announcement-wise. We'll get into your updates, get into your questions. So first things first, uh, one question, one comment that I've seen a lot already in this video is about those uh, masks, about questions related to COVID and the virus. We were on the back side of things, starting to get back to normal, and uh, our great government, governor uh, has been doing a ton of testing. Florida, state of Florida testing is above and beyond pretty much any state that I know of. Uh, at least that I've really looked into. We're testing everybody and anybody. So testing has gone exponentially high and number of positive cases is also spiking. So a lot of people freaking out around the area. Uh, the Pinellas County government, actually the county commission actually passed an ordinance making it mandatory to wear masks inside in public spaces. So when you're inside in a public space, like, for example, our office at Hubbard's Marina, it is ordinance, Pinellas County ordinance that you have to wear a face covering, not necessarily a mask, but a face covering. Now, outside in the open, fresh air, no masks required. However, when we're loading the boats, when we're transitioning, when everybody's lined up, might not be a bad idea to wear a face covering. It's encouraged, not required. So here at Hubbard's Marina, policy is simply uh, we encourage face masks. They are not required. We encourage face coverings. They're not required. However, inside in public spaces, not our rule. The county requires face coverings. So that is where we're going to leave it. We're not talking any more about the virus. You can ask all the questions you want, but we're not talking about it because we're leaving politics and opinions out of this episode of our live show. Thanks to uh, our good buddy, our venting tools. We're not talking about it. So that's what it is. <laughs> uh, so beyond that, the weather uh, the weather, as far as the weather is concerned, we always like to talk about the weather real quick. Not much to talk about weather-wise, but you can go to our website, hubbardsmarina.com, click Fish and Trips, scroll down to the Weather Links page. On our Weather Links page, it's going to show you the NOAA forecast, Wind Finder forecast. Down at the bottom, it's got our good buddy Mike, the weather page, his website. That's a really, really good one. Um, but if we start up on the wind finder forecast and look, we're going to look at the extreme offshore forecast, 39 hour area, 44 hour area. We've been blessed with this perfect, almost no wind condition 
uh, almost no rain even, not even afternoon thunderstorms. It has been absolutely gorgeous around here. Extremely hot, but gorgeous weather. Unfortunately, that trend is changing this weekend. We get a little bit of weather coming in here Friday. Uh, that Friday leads into Saturday. Gets a little bumpier, a little windier. We get a little bit of rain there Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and then hopefully going to calm back down and get beautiful after the uh, late weekend, early part of next week. Uh, but if you look closely, we get a little bit of wind, but the wave forecast really doesn't pop up too much. Still not forecasting anything really above three foot, which to me doesn't make much sense. If they're forecasting almost 25 knot gusts, why doesn't this wave forecast jump? So it's still early. It's still too early to tell. Right now it's only June 28th. This bad weather or supposed bad weather they're forecasting is not until late part of this coming weekend. So uh, almost seven days out. So definitely way too early to freak out about or to think about too deeply. But definitely wanted to point it out to you guys. Um, now the NOAA forecast, they only go about five days out. So we only have until Friday. Everything's three foot or less in that offshore report for NOAA. So everything according to NOAA, as far as the eye can see, looks good. Windfinder and the six, seven, eight day uh, time span, that's when the weather starts getting a little questionable. So as NOAA catches up, once we're five, seven days out, we'll know more. But my good buddy Mike uh, at Mike's weather page at the bottom of the uh, weather links page. This is where we find out the true information. So Mike's weather page, spaghettimodels.com has a ton of good information. My favorite part are these prog charts. So this is the next three days. We know the next three days looks good. So we're going to look at the advanced forecast. These are the prog charts for way into the van way into the future. So Wednesday, July 1st, we've got a high pressure. July 2nd, that high pressure starts subsiding. Friday, still not much going on. And then you can see where that bad weather is being forecasted. And that's it right here on the bottom. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it's this low pressure that dips down. Uh, this is Saturday's forecast. This over here to the right is Sunday's forecast. So they're forecasting this low pressure to kind of dip. It doesn't even enter the Gulf of Mexico. It doesn't even enter the state of Florida, but it dips low enough to where they're forecasting on wind finder and the super advanced forecast that it might make the wind and rain come our way, but still way too early to tell. So no reason to cancel any trips, but did want to point it out to you guys so we can all keep an eye on it together. All right. So talked about the weather talked about uh the covid updates uh one thing i wanted to make sure you're aware of is sunday july 26 don't forget we added a brand new 39 hour trip only has got about 20 25 people on it right now so tons of room on it so make sure you check out that sunday july 26 39 hour fishing trip and with that, let's start getting into some of these questions. Um, but I think before we get into the questions, it's time to give away one of these free trips. So let's see a free trip. Let's see who the first winner is. Make sure I have the right page pulled up here. Oh, there it is. Got too many screens going on. All right. Lucky winner. First winner of the night. You are going to win a free five hour half day for two people and if you're picked as a lucky winner you're going to text us at this number right here in the upper right hand corner you're going to text us your home address within about five minutes or so to prove that you were watching live and to prove that you're claiming your free trip so let's see who the lucky winner of our five hour half day for two guests is Drum roll, please. Marcus Head from Southern Illinois, Indiana. Sorry, Marcus. <laughs> Marcus Head from Southern Indiana. 
uh, is the lucky winner of that five hour half day for two guests. So thanks for tuning in, Marcus. Make sure again you text us at this phone number uh, within about five minutes to prove that you're watching live. That is a five hour half day for two guests. We still got to give away our 10 hour all day for two. And then towards the end of the show, we're going to give away a free 39 hour fishing trip for one guest. Already sitting at about. 460 live viewers between Facebook and YouTube. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Um, Got to find the first questions. All right, first question. Going on a 44 hour trip this weekend. Just want to know if Ballyhoo works for you guys over here in our area. So Ballyhoo works for trolling bait. A lot of people troll Ballyhoo. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it. I wouldn't waste your time so much with the Ballyhoo. They're expensive. I would probably stick to trolling those uh, skirted plugs, those uh, lipped plugs, or the Shima or uh, Yozuri Vanitas. Uh, the lipped plugs, though, are definitely the most popular nowadays. The Nomad DTX Minnow, the Rapala x rap Magnum, all work really, really well uh, for us on our trolling uh, expeditions on our 39 and 44-hour trips. You can also troll on five-hour half days, um, but mostly it's the 39 and 44-hour trips. Uh, would you ever consider changing your 10-hour all-day fishing trip to a 12-hour trip on one of the weekday trips. It could fish the same areas as your 12-hour night trips only during the day. And we have considered it. It's a great question. Uh, we've done it for many, many years. So uh, starting this year, this year was the first year uh, in about probably six years that we did not offer a 12-hour day trip on the party boat. I actually personally took that out of our schedule this year. Um, I hate the 12-hour day trip on the party boat. We used to use uh, that as an option during red snapper season, and I, 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 I think we did it as long as I can remember. Uh, we had a 12-hour day trip. However, it just really, uh, I personally didn't enjoy it. I didn't like it. I didn't want it in our schedule, and I took it out. And the reason for that is the 12-hour day trip was such a long run. Uh, you had such a short window of fishing time, and it was during the middle of the day. So that day trip left at 7 a.m. You'd start fishing around 11 a.m., and we'd have to stop fishing by about maybe 3 to 4 p.m. So you'd only get about four hours of fishing time in the absolute worst part of the day, midday, where in the summertime when the water's hot, midday is the worst time to be fishing. So the 12-hour day trip just sucked. It set us up for a lot of failure. Uh, it was more expensive than the 10-hour all day because we were running further, burning more fuel. And... Um, if people went into it expecting 39 hour quality catches um, at the price of an extended day trip and we just didn't get that far we didn't have that much fishing time and the fishing time was in the middle of the freaking day so we didn't really do that well uh, even on the best 12 hour day trips we'd still have a lot of negative reviews from people oh their pictures are misleading or Oh, they advertise this when it's really this. And it's like, man, you're looking at 39-hour quality fish, comparing it to the day trip you just took on the party boat. So to me, uh, the 12-hour day trip was not the quality product Hubbard's Marina likes to provide. And uh, it, was, it just set us up for failure as a company. Even if we did really well, we were still not a hero to everybody on the boat. So I'd much rather stay close to shore, run our 10-hour all-day trip, which is super popular, catches plenty of fish, and everybody leaves the boat happy. Uh, so if you want Red Snapper, you got to do that 12-hour extreme trip, that 39-hour, that 44-hour, or a long-range private charter. It definitely lowers the amount of availability for people to be able to do Red Snapper trips with us at Hubbard's Marina, but 
it also makes sure that everybody has the best opportunity to get offshore and catch good quality red snapper when they're on a trip with us. Uh, let's see, next question. Alabama, the state of Alabama shut down red snapper season early in anticipation of meeting quota early. Would it be safe to assume quotas are set on the number of coastal miles a state has? Just curious how the dates for fishing seasons are determined. That is a whole nother live show. Uh, that is a good question uh, and a whole host of reasons and uh, questions go into your answer. Um, so long story short, Michael, uh, the question about red snapper seasons and how Alabama shut down their season early, you're talking about state red snapper seasons. So there is four red snapper, which is unique to only red snapper. There's three different uh, fisheries. There's three different quotas, if you will. So there's uh, commercial anglers and there's recreational anglers for red snapper and for all fish commercial anglers commercial quota recreational anglers recreational quota for red snapper and red snapper alone they took that recreational quota and they split it and they made a private recreational red snapper and a four higher recreational red snapper it was called sector separation and it was done through amendment refish amendment 40 um, probably about four or five years ago. And if you've been a fan of our page for a while, if you followed us a while, we were screaming and crying and fighting against sector separation and unfortunately totally lost that battle. <laughs> and uh, now we're down the road on sector separation and it's worked for everybody, you could argue. Um, I mean, me personally, I didn't feel it was the right thing to do. Uh, when it was happening, but private recreational anglers have had uh, as much or the same access as they did historically. Four higher recreational anglers now have a longer, more sustainable, more accountable, and also a uh, more steadfast season. So private recreational red snapper anglers are controlled by each Gulf state. So state of Florida, state of Alabama, state of Mississippi, state of Louisiana, state of Texas, they all have their own private recreational red snapper season. So your statement about Alabama shutting down red snapper, the state doesn't have any bearing or ability to shut down four higher recreational anglers, which is federally permitted charter boats and party boats. They're controlled by the federal government or NOAA's National Marine Fisheries. So the state can't shut down red snapper for four higher federally permitted charter boats and party boats. However, each state can shut down their private recreational anglers. So Alabama shut down private recreational angling red snapper season. The state of Florida, wide open. They opened June 11th, and uh, they're going to be open through July 24th, end of day, July 24th. They closed July 25th. So that's private recreational red snapper season in Florida. And the seasons are set, set upon state-based quota, and that state-based quota was put out and put forth in a state-based EFP that was argued over almost a decade at the National Marine Fisheries level. So long story short, uh, the seasons are based on quota. That quota was determined by states, uh, state managers at the federal level, at state and federal meetings. And it has nothing to do with the amount of coastline. It has a lot to do with landings and uh, biomass and a lot of arguing. That's what it comes down to. Uh, and that was the very short answer to your question. That was a very uh, loaded question that I could talk about for many, many hours. Fishing regulations in the Gulf of Mexico are very, very intricate and drawn out. And uh, definitely a whole nother show. Uh, next question. When fishing, I have my fingers on the line feeling for the bite. How long after I start feeling the nibbles do I need to start reeling like a bat out of hell? Two seconds? Five seconds? 
Well, it kind of depends on your reel, and it depends on the type of line you're working with, and it depends on your rod, too. For example, on one of those high-speed reels, uh, you can wait a split second or two before you start reeling. But ultimately, uh, if you're fishing dead bait, if you're fishing a double snell rig, uh, and you're fishing uh, monofilament, as soon as you possibly can, you start reeling like a bat out of hell. You don't wait for the bite at all when you're fishing dead bait, especially if you're fishing mono, especially if you don't have a high speed reel. As soon as you feel anything, start cranking. Start cranking like crazy until that fish is in the boat. If you're fishing braided line, if you're fishing a high speed reel, you have a little bit of wait time. You can wait a little bit longer because you have a little bit more forgiveness because there's not as much stretch in your line if you're using braid. If you've got a high speed reel, you can make up a lot of time by just turning that reel once or twice um so high speed reels help braided line with the top shot helps um but ultimately as long as you've got a high speed reel you're gonna definitely not need to worry about reeling as fast but remember the higher the speed reel the lower the gear ratio or the lower the power so the higher the gear ratio the higher the speed but the lower the power the lower the gear ratio the more power you have, but the, the lower the speed you have. So lower gear ratio gives you more power, more or uh, less high speed. Uh, higher gear ratio gives you less power, but more high speed. So that's kind of how you got to look at it and kind of balance it. Me personally, fishing for smaller fish like snapper species, I use a higher gear ratio reel, has less power, but a lighter tackle, lighter rod, going to give me more sensitivity, going to make it more fun to fish for the snapper. Then medium gear ratio, a little higher drag power, a little heavier line for those red snapper, for those medium red grouper, smaller gags. And then a really low gear ratio with really heavy line and heavy tackle uh, for those bigger gag grouper, amberjack, that kind of thing. That's kind of how you want to look at it when you're offshore fishing. All right. But anyway, you slice it. As soon as you feel that bite, you start cranking. It's big live bait and only big live baits when you kind of wait. You feel that bite, you want to let them eat it a little bit. Because if it's a big, huge piece of bait, you got to let that fish eat. But if it's an average size piece of bait, as soon as you feel anything, you start cranking. Let's see, what other questions do we have? Can I use an electric reel or rent one on a 12 hour extreme trip? Uh, you're more than welcome to use an electric reel. You can't rent one, you can use one. Do you need one? Absolutely not. Do I recommend one? Not really on a 12 hour extreme trip. An electric reel is mainly for when you're fishing quite a distance from shore in super, super deep water. So. When I'm fishing 600, 800 foot of water, yeah, I'd break out an electric reel. But when I'm fishing 400 or less, no need for an electric reel in my mind. If anything, it makes it a little bit more difficult and harder. Uh, real quick, want to thank everybody for sending those stars. Randy Kessel, again, sending a bunch of stars. Appreciate it, Randy. Nathan Pittman, again, buddy, I really appreciate your support. Juan Rios, Ivan Nixon, Justin Bendis, Dave DeVoe, Lindsay Cornelia, uh, Christine Kittetelas, <laughs> always butcher your name, I'm sorry, Christine, and Chris Fink, appreciate all the stars you guys sent on Facebook, really, really appreciate it. Uh, so another question I saw, are you starting to sell those custom rods online? And yes, we sell our custom rods on our online store if you haven't seen it net yet we have updated our online store if you go to hubbardsmarina.com click store then click marina store you will see all our updated products on our online store like our new d hookers our favorite fishing reels our favorite fishing shirts and our custom rods but we do not ship those custom rods because shipping custom rods has never really worked out for us here at Hubbard's Marina. It is just a nightmare to ship stuff, period, let alone a fishing rod, as they're so easily broken. So we don't ship those custom rods. We do uh, sell them on our online store, but we absolutely do not 
ship them. Uh, thank you, Chris Fink. I appreciate it. Really hitting home with a bunch of stars. That is awesome. Thank you, Randy Cassell, as well. Sending some additional stars. Thank you, guys. If you guys don't know what stars are, if you're sitting there like, what is this guy talking about? It's on Facebook. It's this new thing Facebook has started where you can send your favorite uh, live shows stars. And it's basically a way to show support for your favorite live videos on Facebook. And it also allows us uh, a more uh, easy way of reaching out to more potential fans and using that stars money for uh advertising budgets on social media so really appreciate it guys let's see what other questions we have can't wait for july 24th 39 hour trip how much does it cost to enter the prize pool for biggest snapper what out what other fish have prize pools so typically on the 39 hour trip we do have a jackpot or prize pool for biggest fish and typically on those trips, it's about 10 to $20, depending on how many people are on the boat, what time of year it is, what we're fishing for. Lately, we've been doing $20 to enter for biggest snapper and biggest grouper. Uh, and then if there's a lot of people on the boat, sometimes we'll even do a third category. But lately, it's been biggest grouper, biggest snapper for 20 bucks. Captain, The first captain organizes those jackpots and uh, takes the money and collects it all up and then weighs the fish at the end of the trip. That's how that jackpot system works. And the jackpots are only on those long-range trips like the 39-hour and 44-hour trips. Thanks, Gabe, for the stars, buddy. Thanks, George Brewster, as well. Really appreciate it, y'all. Thanks for the support. What is the best use for, oh, best line to use for bass? Um, not much of an inshore fisherman, uh, or actually not much of an inshore fisherman, uh, but not much of a freshwater fisherman at all. Uh, I fish for bass a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit uh, when I was in school uh, in college at University of Central Florida um, for about three years. <laughs> I went to school for about three years. I didn't quite finish my uh, bachelor's degree, unfortunately. Uh, fishing was on the brain. Got my AA, got a minor in hospitality management, didn't quite finish the bachelor's degree. But uh, I fished for bass quite a bit in school when I wasn't uh, working. <laughs> and uh, when I fished for bass, we used really, really light braided line with a, a short, like five foot, uh, fluorocarbon like 10 pound test leader and my favorite was a Senko worm one of those little six inch plastic worms with a weedless four aught hook uh, that was my favorite rigging for bass and I still use it quite a bit today occasionally when I go over to my brother-in-law's house uh, he's got a little freshwater lake behind his house and caught a bunch of big bass back there but a uh, Senko worm four aught hook light light braided line and a super super light uh fluorocarbon uh little four foot piece of line bass uh, when they're when they're ready to eat they they eat uh especially here in the state of florida our largemouth bass are in my experience pretty easy to fool <laughs> I just don't like bass fishing, man. It's fun. If that's the only thing you got to do, if fresh water is the only thing around you, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm casting a lure and I know what I'm going to catch and I know with a pretty high amount of confidence that it's going to eat, it's not very fun. Like, for example, in the morning around the docks, there's a hundred snook around. And you could cast a lure. You might not catch a snook. And you could cast a live bait, you might not catch a snook. Some mornings you throw a pinfish, a pigfish, a shrimp, a mirror lure, a DOA, and you still might not get one of those snook to eat. Whereas bass, if you know you've got a lake with bass in it, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty certain you can get one of those bass to eat uh, after a couple casts if you know what you're doing, if you got the right lure, that kind of thing, if you're casting the right spot. So to me, bass fishing is a little bit, a little bit easy if you know what you're doing. Uh, not that I know what I'm doing, but I found it easy. Um, and they just don't fight very hard. 
Uh, but granted, I was using my saltwater tackle. <laughs> so a bass doesn't stand up too well to a, a heavy trout rod or especially a snook rod. Um, I would much rather catch a small snook or a, a big trout or a flounder or a mangrove snapper even a small inshore mangrove snapper any day compared to a bass. A bass, you're going to take a picture of, you're going to release it. Saltwater fishing, you cast a bait out there, you never know what's going to bite that bait. And that's what I love about saltwater fishing is you just, you never know what you're going to catch. Every day is different. Every tide, every moon phase, every salinity level, the storms, the air pressure, the salinity, everything goes into it. There's a lot more that goes into it, in my opinion. But Again, I'm no expert tournament professional bass fisherman. Those guys, they are definitely artists at what they do. So I'm not shaming freshwater fishing. I'm not saying saltwater fishing is better. I'm saying in my personal opinion, I prefer to saltwater fish for those reasons. But we're going to move off that touchy subject. Thanks, Randy Kessel, burying us in stars. I love it, man. Thank you, buddy. Uh, if you catch a fish that's bitten in half, are you able to keep it? Does it affect your limit? What if it's out of season? What about proving it's not too short? What if it's something not normally kept? Great questions. So technically, uh, according to the federal government, if a fish, according to the federal and state government, if a fish is mutilated, if it's mutilated, you cannot legally harvest it. So if you catch a fish, and even if it's legal sized, in season, able to be kept, if it's bitten by a uh, shark, or bitten by a fish, or it's all mutilated, you cannot keep it. If you cut up the fish for bait, you cannot keep it. So you're technically not supposed to cut up fish for bait. Um, so technically, no, if a fish is bitten by a shark, you can't keep it. Kind of the general rule of thumb, what a lot of people do is, for example, if gag grouper season's open and you catch a gag grouper, it gets eaten by a shark and it's got a little piece missing out of it. If the remaining piece is over the legal size limit, for example, gag grouper got to be 24 inches. So if you catch a 40 inch gag and it's got a big 12 inch bite out of the back of it, the remaining section of gag is still legal sized, even though it's missing a part of the fish. Most people are still going to keep it. Is it technically legal? It kind of depends on the officer's interpretation. It's a very gray area. So to me, if if I had a huge gag that got bitten by a shark, I'd throw that sucker in the box if it was legal sized. If the piece left was legal sized and it was in season, I'd throw it in the box personally. Now, could I get a ticket for it? Absolutely. If, if the wrong officer got on the boat wanted to write me a ticket, he absolutely could legally write me a ticket because you're not technically supposed to keep a mutilated fish. But what is the officer's definition of a mutilated fish? So very, very gray area there. And um, we've definitely talked about that a lot recently among our captains and crew. But yes and no to answer your question. <laughs> How about that for an answer? Yes and no. <laughs> well, I think it's time to give away another free fishing trip. We're going to give away a 10-hour all-day for two guests this time. 10-hour all-day for two guests. Let's see who the lucky winner is this go-round. 10-hour all-day for two guests. Drum roll, please. Whitney Reese. Ensley, Whitney Reese Ensley. Remember, if you're picked as that lucky winner, you got to text us at that number in about five minutes or less to prove that you are watching live. And you got to send us your home address uh, so we can send you out that gift certificate. So that is that. All right, let's see what other questions we have. We still have another, we still have another trip to give away, so stay tuned. Heading out offshore tomorrow from John's Pass with a boat that has a 25-mile range. Where should I go for my best shot at grouper and snapper? <sighs> a 25-mile range. What in the world kind of boat is that? 
That's got to be a small boat, man. Got to be careful going offshore. If it's only got a 12, 25 mile range, that's got to be like a five gallon gas tank. We're talking like a, a, a small flats boat, man. That is crazy. So be careful because it is summertime in Florida. Those storms can come out of absolutely freaking nowhere. So definitely don't recommend heading offshore in a boat that doesn't have a range for it. But if you've got a 25 mile range, round trip hopefully i pray to god they mean round trip 25 mile range so means one way 50 mile range so if you've got a one way 50 mile range that means if you use the rule of thirds which hopefully you do especially when going offshore the rule of thirds means you use one third to get out one third to get back one third reserve for running in between spots for running the motor that kind of stuff so one third of 50 miles, I have no idea what that number is, but we're going to call it 20 because, <laughs> because I can't do math and I rounded up to 60, uh, but it's probably around 18 miles. So that means 18 miles is your absolute no, point of no return. Uh, so I would say I would probably round that down again to be safe and conservative. So 15 miles is about as far out as you want to be if you've got a 25 mile round trip range. So 18 miles would be as far out as you want to be. Um, round that down to 15. And I would say probably look at uh, some of that uh, that bottom around those offshore wrecks and reefs. I mean, there's a lot of public reefs I would probably hit the pipeline uh, area north of the pipeline. There's some good bottom around there about that range. Um, but as far as grouper, gang grouper, they're well offshore in deep water right now. About as short as you can get a uh, good, consistent, large size gag grouper is about 120 to 140 foot. We're fishing more than 160 foot on most of our trips for those big gags. Deeper waters where it's a little cooler and those bigger gags are hanging out. We're finding a pretty good bite of red grouper around 15 to 25 miles, anywhere from about 70 to about 120 foot. We've seen some nice red grouper. Red snapper start about as shallow as 120 to 135, but we're really finding most of those red snapper out there in 150, 200 foot of water. So with that short of range, it's tricky as far as what where should i go as far as specific what spot can't help you out too much there but i'd start with one of those top spots charts we have the top spots charts right in our hubbard's marina office and i'd be more than happy to open that chart with you and point you into the right direction of some public areas where you can start learning the bottom and that's the that's the trick is punching in a public number and uh and then watching your bottom machine to find some good private bottom on your way to and from that public bottom. And uh, Richard Blazek said, Dylan, stay away from the math. I agree completely with that. There is a good reason that I do what I do and I'm not a mathematician or engineer because me and math don't get along. <laughs> I was actually pretty good at math and... Uh, in uh, middle school and then we got into calculus i like geometry i liked algebra but we got into calculus totally turned off away from math hated it and uh pretty much forgot everything at this point <laughs> i like economics and i like business and hospitality management but uh me and math we don't get along too well uh let's see what other questions do we have Hoping for July 3rd, possibly 2nd. I think that was middle of another conversation. What is the last day for fishing red snapper in the Gulf of Mexico? Well, the last day for red snappers uh, for us on federally permitted for hire vessels, we have a 62-day season that started June 1st, and that runs until end of day, August 1st, uh, essentially making August 2nd around midnight uh midnight and one minute august 2nd the last chance to legally land a red snapper in the gulf of mexico on a federally permitted for hire vessel so at hubbard's marina 
our last 39 hour fishing trip actually leaves the dock it's a really unique trip july 31st we had a 44 hour scheduled originally it was july 31st it was the last 44 hour i was hoping red snapper would be a little longer this year so i was planning july 31st of being a 44 hour trip so it was scheduled to leave the dock at 10 a.m um at july 31st but uh red snapper season was a little shorter than anticipated so we're still leaving the ju the dock july 31st at 10 a.m but we're returning to the dock august 1st saturday at 11 59 p.m so we leave the dock friday 10 a.m we come back to the dock saturday night 11 59 p.m right before midnight uh, and that is the last long range trip for red snapper the last uh red the last 12 hour stream is friday the 31st for red snapper so that is the last chance for those red snapper in the gulf of mexico with us at hubbard's marina <laughs> Any openings on the 12-hour extreme trip in July, we are pretty full up on those 12-hour extreme trips. Um, we had a bunch of them last week, this past week. Um, we do have three open spots. Looks like we got some cancellations July 5th. Sunday, July 5th, got three open spots on a 12-hour extreme. Besides that, everything else is sold out for July on the 12-hour extreme. But we do have nine spots this coming Tuesday on the 39-hour. We've got five spots this coming Friday on the 44-hour. we got ten spots Tuesday, July 7th on the 39-hour. And then the most wide-open red snapper trip left is that Sunday, July 26th, 39-hour trip. It's got tons of room left on it still. Good question. Let's see. Next question. On the 39-hour trip, it's recommended to use double snell rigs for mangrove snapper. Then it's recommended to use a single hook rig for grouper and red snapper. If using a snell rig, does a live pinfish go on the hook, top or bottom? Uh, so, great question. I like using a double snell rig for almost any fish when fishing dead bait. So when fishing dead bait, I use a double snell rig almost all the time. However, when fishing for things like amberjack, mangrove snapper, uh, grouper, they come up and they swallow the bait whole. So you really don't need a double snell rig. I still fish a double snell rig on dead bait because you get those little fish that come up and peck like snapper and other species. And it allows me a better chance at catching them. Um, but... For species that I know are going to come up and swallow my bait whole, like red snapper, grouper, amberjack, uh, a single hook is really all you need. Because if they swallow the bait whole, that single circle hook will set in that fish's mouth and you'll be fine. But for fish that come up in little pecks at the bait, uh, snap at it, those are definitely the fish you want that double snell rig for. So me personally, always use a double snell when I'm fishing dead bait. When I'm fishing live bait, I use a bigger single hook rig. Um, now for mangrove snapper fishing, they still like those small pin fish, and I'll put those on a double snell rig, and I'll rig those on the bottom hook of the double snell rig, or the hook furthest from the lead. But generally still gonna use a single hook rig for live bait unless i'm specifically targeting mangrove snapper with small live bait then i'd use that bottom live um or that bottom furthest hook from the lead on uh, that double snell rig what is the best braided line for deep sea fishing that is a hundred percent an opinion there is a ton of great braided line on the market me personally i use spider wire deep blue camo and that's only because that's what dogfish tackle had on their shelf uh me personally i mean uh spider wire uh, power pro uh there's a bunch of different ones out there that work well uh, but i really personally like the spider wire deep blue camo that's what i've had on my reels for a while now um, and the only reason i have it on there is that's what dogfish tackle put on my reel um no special preference one way or the other how much is it to fish from the dock and from what time can you be fishing from 
on our dock we allow people to fish for free it doesn't cost anything to fish from our dock as long as we're not actively loading or unloading a trip uh, you're welcome to fish on our dock absolutely free however uh, we ask that you be respectful of the wildlife, be respectful of the dock, clean up after yourself, don't cause problems, don't cause messes, don't go hooking pelicans, and we're good. You're, you're, you're clear to have as much fun as you want out there and enjoy it. Um, but once you start hooking pelicans or making messes that you're not cleaning up or catching out-of-season fish or under-season fish or, or uh, not undersized fish, and not taking care of the species that's when we have a little bit of an issue that we might chat with you about as long as everybody gets along we're good to go uh, but yep it's free to fish the dock as long as we're open if if the office is closed we lock the gates absolutely no trespassing um, on the dock let's see here I uh, wanted to give Josh a shout out. Very helpful, very helpful when we booked a 39 hour trip. Uh, answered all my questions, had a great sense of humor. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for the shout out for Josh. Let's see here. Last question of the night. Remind people to pack their medications. That's a good point. On those 39 and 44 hour trips, we've ran into some instances where people get out there on a 39 hour trip and they forgot to pack their diabetes medication or their heart medication and uh, that creates a lot of issues. So make sure if you're going on a fishing trip to bring your legal medication. Your uh, illegal drugs are not allowed, but legal drugs highly encouraged <laughs> make sure you have your prescription medication if you go on a fishing fishing trip great question all right and i think that's about all the time we have tonight guys uh, we are going on a solid hour here i've been up since 4 a.m and tomorrow we officially launch our brand new location so i need to get some sleep and uh that new location, I'm not going to be able to show you good because dang, dang lights are off in there. I was going to show you the security am security camera footage of the shop so you get an idea of what it looks like. But it, the lights are off. The IR doesn't look as good. So you're going to have to wait for the live video. Once we open the doors tomorrow at our new location, we'll do a little live video and show you around. So very excited about that new location store development llc got it built out for us in a matter of five days five days they took a total crap hole of a storefront they turned it into something really beautiful we started from uh asking about and inquiring about renting this location to being ready to open up in less than one week's time city permitting sign permitting uh, occupational license fire inspection internet power water all turned on in less than seven days so awesome awesome feat i'm so excited to open up tomorrow definitely excited to show you guys around our new location inside john's pass and uh don't forget Next week, we've got our good friend, Benny Ortiz. If you don't know who Benny Ortiz is, uh, you probably haven't done or looked up anything about slow pitch jig fishing. Slow pitch jig fishing, it's that new craze in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, Benny Ortiz is definitely one of the founding fathers of slow pitch jig fishing. And uh, he... Uh, is gracing us with his presence next week on the live show so make sure tune in next week for the live show we're going to give away free trips we're going to be talking fishing with benny ortiz himself and uh, we're going to be drinking some more of this good old jameson so thanks for tuning in y'all remember if you're too busy to go fishing you're just too busy and let's see who won that free 39 hour fishing trip for one guest, free 39 hour trip for one guest coming at you now. Drum roll, please. Philip Brittis and his wife Susan just did a 39 hour trip. 
and uh, they did a 12 hour extreme. They've been fishing with us for a long while. So really cool, Philip. you won a 39 hour fishing trip for one guest. Don't forget your wife, bro. You'll be sleeping on the couch for a while. Want to sh give a huge shout out to Randy Kessel for being the top stars donator tonight. Nate Pittman right behind him. Juan Rios as well. Really appreciate everybody uh, doing those stars for us. Really a big help. We'll see you next week with Benny Ortiz for another live stream show. We'll see you all week this week on our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Please go to Hubbard's Marina. Uh, on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Only 70% of our viewers are subscribed. So make sure to go to subscribe and uh, we'll see you next week for another great show. Thanks for tuning in y'all. We'll see you again soon.